Hi guys, Tina Gale here and I'm back with another process video. So today I am working with the Scrap Rooms Flavors of the Month again. So this is the Photo Play Paper collection, Tula and Norbert. And I am in love. This is my favorite collection in a very long time. It's definitely the favorite one of the latest releases. So I was so excited when Rochelle added this to the Flavors of the Month. So I'm showing you here all of the papers and all of the cardstock that's in this kit. Now this also includes the add-on kits, the add-on papers where you get two extra papers and two extra card stocks. Um, and then I do have the add-on on the embellishments. So I wanted to use every bit of it. So I'm also using the Freaky Fast Friday Challenge. So I've put it up here in the left corner. If you've followed me for very long, you know this is my favorite all-time challenge to play along with as well. So I hope you'll join us at the scrap room and play along. So what it is, if you're not familiar, is we have a formula with different sizes of papers, and that's all you can use, and then a 12 by 12 sheet of background paper. And so I always start um, kind of deciding what I want on papers depending upon the sizes. So I've already cut them all, and you can see how I'm kind of laying it out, but I'll kind of go through a little bit. So usually if there's a long strip or something like that, I usually choose a stripe. So this one was a one by eight and a half inch, so you can see that I chose the striped paper. And then after that, I knew I wanted the biggest piece pretty much to be these gnome patterned papers because they're just too cute and that's what my layout's all about is my obsession with gnomes. And so I did choose it. Um, it's actually just a little bit smaller. It's a five and a half by 10, I believe. And then the plaid paper was the seven by 11. So it's actually a little bit bigger. Um, so I did choose it that it would have worked totally to have done it opposite. And then I just, I loved the little aqua flower. So that made the, the cut for the other piece of paper. So that one's about a four by eight and a half. And the great thing about this challenge is once all your papers are cut, all you have to do is play with them and just rearrange them on the page. There are endless possibilities that you can do with these different sizes of papers. So I wanted most of the paper showing, so I spread it all out. And you can check out the blog and the Facebook group from the scrap room and see what the design team's done with this challenge as well. And you'll see they're all really, really different looking. And it's just how you lay them out on the, on the background. So it's really a fun challenge. So I had four little photos of some of the gnomes that I have. So I went crazy recently and got a bunch of gnome t-shirts for all the different holidays. Um, the photo up at the top right is the little gnome that we had in the scrap room at Christmas time that I had done. And I now have another one that I did for every day. And so I'm thinking I need to make like a little fold out album on top of one of these and include all of the extra ones because I also added another little gnome um, to my buffet bar. So I have plenty more pictures. So this is the basic design and now I'm just trying to decide about embellishments. And I think that was the hardest part for me on this layout. Um, normally I do these layouts really, really quick. And this one was quick too. It was probably 30 minutes or less. Um, but because I had that gnome paper at the bottom, it was a little bit harder for me to pick out embellishments because I love doing all the icons and I already had so many icons in the paper. Um, but I love the little gnome sitting on the mushroom. So I put it up at the top and I had this little um, ephemera piece that says, um, I dig you and I thought I wanted it up there, but it ends up not working. So it doesn't make the cut. I'm going to end up moving it off. So then I just go for the different word phrases and I found several. Um, one says the gnome life, which it's going to stay up there. And then this is the good stuff. I'm going to put it down at the bottom left and create a cluster down there. And then there were um, a frame sticker on the sticker sheet. And I decided to, to really pop out one design. And the, the way that I decided it was this shirt down here is a Valentine shirt. So it's a red and it was a different color from everything else. The other photos kind of match in with the colors of the collection, but this one was a little bit more vibrant. It's pink and it's red. 
So by using the frame with that plaid paper, it just kind of drew it all into the rest of the layout without it being like, you know, what here does not belong, the little game off, I think it was Sesame Street, you know, which one of these don't belong. So that's one way if your photos don't match up, of course you can always do gray and, you know, a black and white photo, which is not what I wanted to do with my gnomes, um, or frame it and tie it in together. So back to the embellishments. So since that shirt had pink and red on it, I had this little snail and he's pink. So that helped tie it back to the background as well. So I, I pop dotted him up. I just thought he was adorable. And since he wasn't a gnome, then I could, you know, add that icon on top without him getting lost. So the other icons that I found was this scalloped circle that has another gnome. It says, you always bring a smile to my face because they do. Every time I walk by and I see one of my gnomes, I just agree and I just think they're so cute. And then at the bottom left cluster, there was this little greenery pot. And so again, it kind of was something other than a gnome that gave me some kind of shape. So on all of those, I pop dotted them up and then everything else is just flat. At this point, I'm, I'm getting happier with the embellishments, but I know it needs more, but I really am not sure how to divide it up. So I found these little bumblebee stickers and they are so adorable. So I decided to stick a couple of those up there and you'll see here, I decided they needed the little flight pattern. So I got my black pen and just kind of drew a little dashed line for a flight pattern. And that really started bringing the embellishments to life. So then I decided the papers really need some type of division. So I end up just sketching around all of the paper, well, not all of the papers, the, the turquoise floral, the striped banner, and the gnome paper. I just did a couple of messy lines all the way around those, and that really separated up the papers and looked so much better. You could also achieve it by inking the edges of those papers so that it would divide up, and it just creates more of dimension to the layout, whereas now it's just kind of looking just kind of flat. Um, and I'm gonna add the journaling up next to the mushroom. So you can see I took away the one little ephemera piece. I tried another mushroom, but it was just kind of too much. Um, I contemplated doing the black outline on the plaid paper and the entire craft background, but I decided that would be too overwhelming and I really just wanted to stick to the inside papers. And that's going to finish this layout other than my journaling right across the top there and you'll see that in the final photos. I absolutely love how this turned out. Love my gnomes. I know they're not everybody's thing, but they're definitely mine. So I'm including a snapshot here of the flavors of the month and the final layout, as well as the Freaky Fast Friday Challenge. We would love to have you come on over to the scrap room and check it out and play along with us. There are prizes up for grabs, and we also have a sketch challenge and lots of other ones. So come play with us. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you're getting your scrap on today. And thanks so much for watching, and I will see you really soon. Bye-bye.